from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Against his will, a developmentally disabled child forced to steal from a gas station. And police want you to see this video. First, breaking tonight, police arrest an impatient driver who almost ran over two officers. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11. One officer was injured. The driver arrested a short time ago, a couple of miles away from the scene. This happened while police were investigating a motorcycle accident. The night cams Tim Pamplin shows us officers showed restraint when that driver nearly mowed them down. It all started with a motorcycle semi collision, which has taken the back seat to what ultimately happened here. Police were blocking Jefferson at West End, and then it turned into the wild West End. Take a look at this video. A driver wants to go around the roadblock. A police officer tells her to stop, turn around. That's when she starts driving towards him. He's got his hand on his weapon. Continuing to tell her to stop. His partner then gets involved. And that's when she takes off down Jefferson. Now, I'm being told she was apprehended just a couple of miles down Jefferson Avenue. She is in custody. Now, the female police officer, I'm told she's a rookie. Apparently, she had her foot ran over. She was put on a stretcher. She's going to the hospital. No respect for law enforcement down here on Jefferson tonight. Back out here, I'm being told the motorcyclist in the original situation, he's in serious condition. The investigation is ongoing. So to recap, one female rookie police officer in the hospital, suspected broken foot, and that lady who thought she could get away is locked up. The officers tonight used a bucket load of restraint. She could have been in the morgue. That's the scene in Southwest Detroit with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. Also breaking news, the Wall Street Journal reporting Ford Motor Company plans to cut 10% of its global workforce. The job cuts are expected to be announced later this week and reportedly target salaried employees. The journal cites anonymous sources briefed on the plan. No word yet if hourly factory workers are included. Ford not commenting tonight. A developmentally disabled teen being forced to steal from a Detroit gas station and it's all caught on camera. Police would like everybody to see this video to help identify uh, the man who's directing him. It's already happened twice. Mar McDonald joins us live from Detroit's west side with more of this video, Mar. Kimberly, the bottom line is the clerks inside here say that this older man is essentially forcing this kid to steal and it is all caught on multiple angles of surveillance video because this gas station is part of Project Greenlight. It all starts outside the gas station. The teen, who clerks say is between 13 to 15, gets out of this Jeep with a man who appears to be between 50 to 60 years old. They enter the gas station at the same time and watch as he directs the boy, who witnesses describe as developmentally disabled, to start stealing. The kid's terrified, putting his hands up and backing away. The older man stays to monitor and then leaves. The boy is doing as he's told and taking boxes of candy. When he goes to leave, the doors have been locked. Watch as he launches himself against the glass. When that doesn't work, he picks up a newspaper stand to try and smash his way out. He's scared and agitated. The clerk unlocks the door remotely and he leaves and goes to climb in the Jeep with the older man who was telling him what to do. He's forcing him to commit these crimes and this guy should be ashamed to himself. This is the second time in two weeks this has happened. Here's the first time this went down. This older man bullies him and then tries to distract the clerk. Rustin was so worried about this kid's welfare, he called DPD detectives. They have the video and are running down leads right now. I talked to detective to please help this kid out. I don't worry about these three, four boxes of candies. I'm worrying about this kid. Back here live, DPD has got surveillance video from here that shows the plate on that Jeep. They're working on that right now, but Rustum is adding a little sweetener into the mix here. He says if you can ID who this 50 to 60 year old man is, he's got a $500 reward. He'd be happy to pay you. We're live on Detroit's West Side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Just a heartbreaking tragedy in Warren this afternoon. This is the little boy who drowned in a backyard pool. We've learned his name is Kevin. That little guy was just 22 months old. He somehow got out onto the pool deck in the backyard of his home and he ended up in the pool. 
When his mother realized he was missing, she ran outside. She saw him in the water. Warren police are investigating, but tell us this appears to be just a horrible accident. The defense has rested and closing arguments will begin tomorrow in the trial of a man accused of killing Chelsea Brook. Daniel Clay took the stand today in his own defense and told the jury about the night Brook died. He says while the two had sex, she asked him to choke her. He says he did and accidentally killed her. So I didn't mean for her to die. Didn't mean for this to end like this. And it's not my intent. It was to have a good time. Prosecutors say this was no accident. They say Brooke's jaw was broken and she was beaten with a blunt object. The FBI not quite done with Macomb County. Today, Candace Miller revealed they are investigating the Public Works Department. Miller is the Public Works Commissioner and says about 10 employees have been subpoenaed to testify before a grand jury. They've also had to hand over documents to the FBI. We're told the investigation centers around former Public Works Commissioner Anthony Morocco and former Public Works employee Dino Bucci. A Mother's Day tragedy for a Lincoln Park family. They were watching Local 4 News this weekend when they learned a man was killed in a motorcycle crash. And they soon realized it was their loved one who had been killed. Priya Mann joins us live. And Priya, this was a father of three. He had an 8 and 10 year old and an adult daughter. Eddie Padilla was married to the love of his life for 11 years. And tonight, his family wants answers after learning of his death from our broadcast. Turn up for news shows one killed in a motorcycle accident. And as soon as I saw the motorcycle, and all I saw was the Puerto Rican flag. I said, oh my God, that was my son. That was my son that he got killed. On Mother's Day, a heartbroken woman learned her son had died in a crash. My husband was sleeping. I went over there and I walked him up and I yelled, baby, is Eddie's dead, he's dead. 38-year-old Edwin Padilla, known by everyone as Eddie, died Saturday evening. He was riding his motorcycle on 4th Street near Omaha when his bike and an SUV collided. Eddie was thrown from the motorcycle and died. Accidents happen all the time. It was a tragic accident, but if it truly was an accident, I mean, then it was an accident. His wife says Eddie spent the day at home with his eight-year-old daughter and 10-year-old son. Around six Saturday evening, he left for a barbecue with friends in Detroit. On his way back home a few hours later, Eddie died in the crash. And I told them, you know, their daddy's an angel now and he'll be watching over them forever. His mom found these flowers at his home on Sunday, Eddie's gift for Mother's Day. This is what my baby gave me. On Mother's Day. <sighs> and the preliminary investigation suggests Eddie may have been speeding, but the family also wants Detroit police to review security camera footage from that area to see what the other driver was doing moments before the crash. Reporting live from DPD headquarters, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya. Tonight, the White House is denying a report that President Trump revealed highly classified information during a visit with Russian officials. The Washington Post reported the president disclosed information about a specific threat from ISIS last week, but the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, says it's simply not true. There's nothing that the president takes more seriously than the, the security of the American people. The story that came out tonight, as reported, is false. The president and the foreign minister reviewed a range of common threats to our two countries, including threats to civil aviation. The Washington Post cites current and former officials in the report. The New York Times also says it has confirmed the report as well. A daredevil dodges danger when his stunt goes wrong. We'll see what happens. That sends him within inches of oncoming traffic. Disrespecting the dead, a driver does donuts at a Michigan cemetery on Mother's Day. The surprise waiting for police when they got there. Hi, Ben. Hey, Kim. We got thunderstorms on the other side of the lake headed in our direction. We'll tell you what that means for the morning commute and some very summer-like temperatures all coming up. It's a ride Greg doesn't remember and one his wife will never forget. Saying to him, you know, Greg, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to get you there. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'll take you along on the ride to save Greg's life and the red flag he doesn't want you to miss.
It's a ride Greg doesn't remember and one his wife will never forget. What started as an ordinary Saturday morning suddenly became a race to save his life. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a couple's story of survival. They've been married for 16 years, but Greg Merritt still refers to his wife Michelle as my bride. She's also his hero for helping save his life one fateful February day. February 25th, 2012, uh, I wake up at 7, 6.30, 7 o'clock, uh, say to uh, my bride, uh, hey, I think I have uh, heartburn. And I was like, oh, you know, you don't have heartburn. And you certainly don't have it in the morning when you first wake up. And he said, you know, I had a bout of heartburn yesterday, too. Michelle is a veterinary oncologist, and her training told her something just didn't seem right, especially knowing Greg had a family history of heart attack. I, being the classic good male that I am, uh, said, Oh, I don't think we need to go to the hospital now. Greg admits he had a golf fitting he didn't want to miss. And I was like, no, I think we should. And I even asked him, you know, twice, do you think we should take an ambulance? And he thought that that was just completely silly. Instead, they started driving to the ER at the University of Michigan. And I was going really fast and he looked over at me and he said, beautiful, I'm fine, slow down, everything is going to be fine. But suddenly, it's not and he was white as a ghost and he was sweating profusely. So I knew that he was going into cardiac arrest. Greg's heart had stopped beating. So I just thought I just need to get him to the hospital as fast as I could. Saying to him, you know, Greg, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to get you there as fast as I can get you there. And I thought to myself, Michelle, you know, if you get into a car accident, nobody's gonna make it. They make it to the hospital where staff races to help, but Greg's heart isn't restarting. The attending um, clinician came up to me and said, you know, we've done CPR for about 20 minutes. The likelihood of him coming back, or if he does come back, being a functional person is really low at this point. And do you want us to stop CPR? She asked them to keep trying. And after about five minutes, they actually did get his heart rate back and things like that. They sent him down to the cath lab and they put two stents into his heart. Doctors use a high-tech hypothermia treatment to cool Greg's body. There's a three-day period that I don't know what he's going to be like. But when he wakes up... It was largely what happened. Uh, I couldn't quite believe that a 46-year-old guy who was in relative good health uh, could have something like this happen to him. I have always said Greg is like the luckiest person that I know. Within a couple of days, he was pretty much back to normal, which is truly unheard of. In spite of the outcome, Michelle has struggled with post-traumatic stress from the decisions she made that day. Her advice to others? Absolutely 100% call 911 if there's any concern and get an ambulance. Greg urges others not to brush off their own red flags. It was likely signaling me to say, now's the time to go. You have these little nags uh, of some sort of pain going on. Uh, best thing to do is to go get this checked out. Greg is now determined to pay it forward. He's embarked on a second career to help patients play a more meaningful role in their own health care. His website, Patient is Partner, sums up his vision. He is forever grateful to the medical staff at U of M and says, without Michelle... So there's no way I survive. And so I couldn't be more uh, uh, grateful for, for what she done. And we want to remind you that uh, coming up, um, this year's Metro Detroit Heart Walk is Saturday on the campus of Wayne State. The 5K run starts at 9 a.m. The walk starts at 10. There's a one mile or a three mile route. You can find more information on the health page of clickondetroit.com. Don't ignore those warning signs. Well, he hit it. Huh? It's a guy thing. <laughs> You're we, right. You just want to you want to go play golf. And... Don't do it, guys. <laughs> Take his right. warning. Pay attention. Huh? Uh, all right, here's a look at what Karen Drew is working on for tomorrow night. He's a young man making a big impact on this football field. I didn't know how other people felt about him until this video. He's the motivator. I earned that name. I honestly, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for him. Year after year, player after player, how he inspired from the sidelines and the film that captured his true impact tomorrow at 11. We'll be looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to these warm temperatures we're going to see by the mm -hmm. week, end of the week. It's going to feel like 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go home and blow up my floaties <laughs> for this uh, next few days. Get ready. Uh, but, yeah, it is definitely going to feel like summer. 
Uh, for live radar though tonight has got some showers coming in from the west. This stuff has weakened considerably and it's still in the uh, process of almost falling apart completely. Uh, just some showers right there towards Jackson. If anything, it may sort of clip our south and west zones, but there is a larger batch of thunderstorms on the other side of the lake and these are a little bit more potent. You can see that there are severe thunderstorm watches out back here and even a few warnings too. Uh, those orange boxes there signify where the warnings are. So these are getting a little close for comfort, but again, by the time they cross the lake and move over here in the overnight hours, much stabler air over here is going to weaken those. So generally what we'll see is just some rain, maybe a couple rumbles of thunder, but we're really not looking for anything severe. 58 right now with a light east southeast wind and uh, temperatures in the 50s generally across the area. 60 in Pontiac, 61 here in Flint and Howell checking in at 60. We will be setting our lows uh, in the well, probably next couple hours or so and then see those temperatures remain steady as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. So we've got the morning showers uh, still lingering around for the early part of the commute, but by 10 o'clock, anything that's out there is going to be gone. Sky starts to clear out at least partly cloudy, maybe mostly sunny in a couple locations and a warm front on its way is really going to start ushering in that warm air, especially as we get through the day on Wednesday, which is going to be dry. Thursday, we've added a chance of a shower or storm in, but again, the chances aren't that great and ditto for Friday does look like we will see much better chances of rain as the weekend rolls in. 52 tonight, uh, winds are going to remain light out of the southeast about five miles an hour. Here's your four zone forecast, and these numbers are in quite a large range. We'll start in the metro zone, which is usually one of our warmer locations. But remember that warm front's coming in from the southwest, so we'll see upper 70s on the east side, maybe some low 80s up towards M59. But the warmest spot is going to be here in our south zone, mid 80s, 86 in Blissfield, Lambertville, you'll be at 87. Dundee and Milan at 85, all 80s in our west zone as well, just a little bit cooler up to the low 80s there in Genesee County. And the biggest difference is going to be here in our north zone. This is pretty much where that warm front's going to stop by evening. So we'll see the, only the low 70s out here towards the Lake Huron shoreline and the low 80s in parts of Lapeer and Oakland County. So temperatures get warmer for everybody Wednesday and Thursday, and then a cold front comes in and sort of brings us back to reality as temperatures get a little bit closer to normal and those rain chances improve. Unfortunately, as we get into Saturday and Sunday with some great weather, especially here midweek. Yeah, it's nice. yeah thanks, Ben. I think everybody's familiar with what a breathalyzer is for drunk drivers, but what about a textalizer? We'll see how it could help police determine on the spot if you've been texting while driving. We'll have that coming up and no resting in peace at this Michigan cemetery. A driver caught disrespecting the dead and that's not all. Next. The local